Good morning, everyone. Today for principles of engineering. So I have to be gone because uh, I'm going to be taking the engineering design and development students out to our pond to collect aquatic insects. And so while you guys are um, going to work today, continue to work through simple machines, I'll be uh, on a field trip. So one thing we'll, I'll take a look at first is we'll take a look at the daily plans. Today's daily plans are going to involve you continuing on through our simple machines. So once these load here, so here's our agenda. We're going to look at mechanisms, so simple machines, incline plane, wedge and screw. And then we're also going to take a look at fin trying to finish activity 111, which is simple machine investigation, pages 12 through 14. I'll show you what that kind of looks like. Hopefully it should go by pretty quick. And then if any time you have leftover, go ahead and have you try out this, the rest of the simple machines practice problems, numbers 18 through 30. So and then on Monday I can come back and, and answer any questions you may have. So for the simple machines practice problems. So let me go ahead and go back to the home. We will take a look at what you're going to be working on today. So we'll go into mechanisms and still in activity 111 and under the resources tab we will find the second presentation so we made it through the first three simple machines lever wheel and axle and pulley we're going to move on to incline plane wedge and screw all right so in this presentation we're going to focus on just those three so these are going to uh, have a lot of the same principles of the simple machines we've already looked at this is going to be the ratio um, with dealing with mechanical advantage we're going to be dealing with the ratio of magnitude of resistance and effort forces as well as the distances by those and so as you guys have been learning a lot of these ratios allow designers to to determine what kind of speed distance force function that are simple machines have. So again, this is a repeat slide from before. You know, mechanical advantage of four to one tells us what? Well, that means that we have to use an effort force uh, is four times less to be able to move something, but we have to travel a four times greater distance in order to make that happen. So there's always the trade-off when we're using simple machines. So again, one is the magic number. If your mechanical advantage is greater than one, you use less effort force to overcome the resistance, but you have to travel a greater distance. If your mechanical advantage is less than one, you have to use a greater effort force, but you have to travel less distance. And keep in mind, your mechanical advantage can never be less than or equal to zero. So IMA is, is uh, coming back here. We're gonna make some changes to IMA. So for these three problems, it's gonna make things just a little bit more, probably just a little bit more intuitive. And AMA is gonna stay the exactly the same. So these are not changed as we move forward here. So as we get into incline plane, here you have a flat surface set at an angle or an inclined with no moving parts. So you're able to lift objects by pushing or pulling the load or the object wherever that may be so here we're actually going to change and you'll see this on your engineering formula sheet the IMA is going to change to make it just a little bit like I said a little bit more intuitive so here we're going to change L to be our DE which is going to be where our efforts applied which is us if we pushed a cart up a ramp our effort we would be going up the length of the ramp and then the resistance is we're trying to overcome the height so in this case, or H. So we use those. So now we're going to change instead of DE, we're going to use L. And instead of DR, we're going to use H in this case. So here, if we've got a cart that's 15 feet long, and then the height we're trying to overcome is 4 feet, what is the IMA? We can take 15 divided by 4, length divided by or the length of the ramp divided by the height, and we're able to find we got about a 3.8 to 1 ratio. So this should be pretty easy as we go forward. AMA is the exact same. We got a 50 pound uh, resistance force that is the, how much the cart weighs and we're going to push with 20 pounds so we're getting a two and a half to one mechanical advantage. What is the efficiency? Efficiency doesn't change either. We can take our AMA divided by the IMA multiplied by 100 and we're going to find that this efficiency for this machine is about 67 percent. 
So again, a lot of these things are going to stay the same. Nothing really too earth shattering here. And that's what we're going to be moving forward with. All right, a wedge is just a moving incline plane. Tapers to a thin edge. You can use it to raise large he uh, heavy bodies, split things, or tighten by driving, driving it into something. And here it's the same kind of scenario. The only th difference is, is that our length that we have for the wedge is not the sloping edge anymore. It is the, it is the length that is perpendicular to the height. So you can see that over on the picture on the right side as we do that. So that's the only difference between the wedge. So again, we're using L and H as our notations. So what's the IMA of the wedge shown? We got a 10 inch length. Again, it's perpendicular to the height. So it's set at 90 degrees if you look at the directional arrows that they have for our dimension lines. We're gonna take the length, 10 inches divided by three, and it's gonna give us a 3.3 .3 to one mechanical advantage. So if we were looking at actual mechanical advantage, this doesn't change. So let's say we're going to put in 250 pounds of effort and the resistance is we got 700 pounds even though this has 700 pounds on both sides you know we're just going to go through and use the one 700 pound. So we're looking at how much force does it drive you know in each direction. So here we got about 2.8 here's the efficiency and the same kind of calculation can be done. Not AMA divided by IMA and multiplying by 100. So 84% efficiency for the wedge. The last simple machine we have here is the screw. We have two components. We have an incline plane wrapped around a cylinder forming a path and a pitch. And the pitch is how much, how much distance you have between two screw threads. And so really what they have is they've got a wheel and axle that's used to create rotary motion and the incline plane kind of wraps around the cylinder to create that pitch. So, or uh, in the Big Bang Theory episode, they, they had one where Leonard describes uh, Sheldon as being a inclined plane wrapped helically around an axis, and to which Sheldon indicates that he is screwed. So it's a pretty neat little tie-in there. All right, so properties. You can change rotary motion into linear motion. You can use it as a threaded fastener. Most of you are pretty familiar with that. It has a very large mechanical advantage, but because of all the, the movement and the contact that you have, all the turning and everything, you have a large amount of friction loss with it. So here, when we look at screws, uh, if you look at a bolt here, again, pitch is your distance between threads. Your effort arm distance if, distance, if you're using a wrench, your effort arm distance would be the length of the wrench and then you have some thread information so this is calling back to some information from IED where you have a thread note you have here we have one one half which is the diameter that's the size of the screw 13 is how many threads per inch so if you measured one inch on this you would count be able to count 13 threads and then you have usually a description of whether the um, thread is either coarse or fine thread usually UNC UNF or anything like that and that's kind of what we're looking at for the pitch if we need to know the pitch which we do for our calculations if our notation has 13 there then that means the pitch is 113 you just put one over the amount of threads that you have per inch so the question is if we move the screw um, with 13 threads per inch linearly and turned it one full rotation we're gonna move it a thirteenth of an inch uh, if we do one full rotation. That's what the pitch is referring to. All right, these change a little bit. Looks like some of my uh, looks like some of my formatting kind of messed up here. But when you take a look is we're going to change DE, which is going to be the circumference, so which is run one rotation of the effort arm. DR is going to change over to pitch. So the IMA is going to be and just like looking at a formula sheet, circumference divided by pitch. So you got 2 pi r on the top, which uh, looks like my pi and my r kind of got moved around, but I'm going to divide that by p, which represents the pitch. So if we had an 8 inch long wrench that we're using, we would go through and use that as our our radius for the on the top 2 pi r and 8 inches plugged in for r. And here we have a a bolt, so it's 1 fourth 20 unc and 20 is the amount of threads per inch so that means the pitch is 1 20th which is why on the bottom here you're going to end up at dividing that by 1 20th and so here we end up getting an IMA of over a thousand a little over a thousand and so it's like okay 
we get a very large mechanical advantage which is why we're using those screws so we'll take a look and keep that in mind now here's again we're still using eight inches for our lint our wrench and then we're turning this here's our AMA stays exactly the same we're gonna have a resistance force about 1200 pounds we put 35 pounds into it what is the AMA we get a 34 to 1 on the AMA here's where the efficiency comes in we're only going to get a 3.4 percent efficiency out of this so the question is is why is the efficiency so low and the thing is is if any of you've ever used screws or worked with any bolts or anything like that with a drill you'll notice that there's a lot of heat that's generated there's a lot of movement there's a lot of friction as uh, screws being driven into material and even backed out so you get a lot of friction that's going to affect that efficiency so and it takes a while or if any of you've ever jacked up a car you know using the little hand jack you got to do a lot of turns to be able to make that happen it's not just a quick movement that happens so very large mechanical advantage you're able to lift a car but it takes you a lot of movement to make that happen so that's why your efficiency is so low all right and the last slide here simple machines working together in combination to complete a task are called a compound machine so a bicycle i've alluded to this is an example of a compound machine and anytime you're going to calculate mechanical advantage for multiple simple machines working together for a compound machine you are going to multiply those mechanical advantages so that'll be really applicable to our project that we'll see here at the end of the lesson all right, so our, our example here, or our PowerPoint is all taken care of. So now we can go ahead and we can take a look at, first thing is, is we're going to be looking for activity 111, and we'll just kind of see what we kind of have going on here. All right, in the activity, you have been working quite a bit. So I've been referring to page numbers. Some of you have said that some of the page numbers change based upon probably some of the answers you're inputting and everything. But here's where you're going to want to start. If you need to finish anything up on pulleys, go ahead and finish that up today during class. And then part two is called the incline plane and screw. So without any information, it starts on page 12. But this is kind of where we're looking at. All right, so incline plane, we'll be able to use that. You're going to have your resistance force, be able to pull it up the ramp. You'll have some calculations, list and describe two examples. So pretty easy kind of scenario to do there. The last one's going to be the screw. So here you have circumference and pitch for the IMA. And then here I kind of substituted in those different uh, variables. So for DE and DR. And then we can go ahead and we can calculate. Uh, the efficiency and everything going on with it, finding two examples, and answering some of these questions. So really, we're about done with activity 111. I kind of anticipate you being able to get this all wrapped up today. One thing that's going to be very helpful for you, if you take a look at the resources tab, and if you scroll down to right above the Bill Nye Simple Machines video. The other presentation that I've been showing you to as some examples will be this one. So in this presentation you can go through and use um, the resistance weight easiest way there's your incline plane there on the end and you can use that to go ahead and like pull your resistance weight up the ramp and you can measure the length and the height and be able to to find a lot of those okay so I would go ahead and just use the resistance weight in this case you know the weight of it so you know that's gonna be your FR your force of resistance and you're gonna be able to, to be able to get your effort force from the force sensor that you've been working off of alright so incline plane I don't think will be a problem this is the one that usually gets a lot of questions so you will want to make sure that you do have one of these simple machine devices that has the bars in there with the gear rack so which is the one where this actually turns 
So here you actually go through and it says measure the radius of the effort is where it's applied to find the circumference. So you will need to find the radius of that. So this one here is going to change just a little bit from what we're normally used to doing. So and that's on the end of the part. Find the pitch by measuring the distance between two threads on the screw. Now I've already done this. So the distance there is 0 0.140 inches. So you don't have to worry about going through and actually measuring that out. So I measured that with a dial caliper in order to get that. All right, and then now the resistance force, since we're not moving the, the that normal resistance force, we're actually moving these gear racks. So, and the weight of those is 0.48 pounds. So I've already done a lot of the work for you as far as finding things like pitch, you are going to have to find the circumference of where the effort is applied. And I already gave you your new, your new force of resistance. So you will need to find the effort force by wrapping a string around where the effort is applied. So around that, uh, that large green wheel with the spokes on it. And use the force sense to determine how much effort is needed to turn the screw. Just like how you did for the wheel and axle. And so that's going to be how you kind of work on some of that today. Okay. So this is going to give you some examples of what you're looking for. But this will kind of wrap up activity 111 for today. Last thing that I'll cover is, and if you have questions, we can always review this stuff on Monday as well. So I'm always going to go through and field any questions for you that you may have. So I'm not going to expect you to turn it in until we have a chance to kind of go through it together. The last one, the um, sub will have your activities for this, the simple machines practice problems. So we've been working on this. I'm going to have you go ahead and do numbers 18, which starts off with simple machines. So with the inclined plane and number 18. And then as you go through 18 through 22 is all dealing with the, with the inclined plane. You have a few with the wedge here. So 23 through 25. And then the last four are going to all deal with the screw. So 26 through 30. So if you get done with activity 111, go ahead and work on these. And then same thing, if you've got any questions, you know, save them for Monday. Do do what you can. And then I'll field any questions or do or try them out. And then if we have to, we can go through and make corrections on Monday. But other than that, that is what today's agenda is going to look like for the day while I'm gone.